Hi, welcome to Gary's Hobby Studio. In this video, I'm going to do the best I can to do in a movie review. Um, it's over Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Uh, I saw it on Thursday of the week that it opened. Because uh, I think it's been at least a week since its release. And by the time you see it, it'll probably be, I want to say, two weeks. Could be wrong on the time. Um, but before I get started, I, I do have a couple of things I, I, I do want to mention. Um, sorry I did not get a uh, video out the, you know, the two weeks after the previous video. Uh, I had some personal stuff going on, uh, some stuff going on at work. Kind of that and some other things just didn't didn't help matters much. Uh, so sorry about that. Did not mean to just leave you guys hanging dry. Uh, my YouTube account is not large enough so that I could post a short or uh, or any kind of... At least I don't think I can post a short. I'd have to look into that. But most people can just do like text posts, almost like uh, tweets and, you know, stuff like that on YouTube. And I, I know I can't do that yet. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So went and saw it, um, Dragon Ball Super Superhero, and I thought it was really good. Uh, I want to say the mix of 2D and 3D animation that, that it had, I mean, it was nice in some aspects, but then other aspects it was kind of, why? Um, I've seen it in other movies where they've tried to, like... What was it? I think it was the first Thor movie. Me and my wife, I think we saw it regular, and then they had it in like some 3D. And some of the 3D it worked out, some of the 3D it didn't. Uh, two of the things that stuck out for that uh, was when Thor threw his hammer, and then, you know, and it was coming at you, and it kind of looked awesome. And there was another scene in, in, like I said, this is the first Thor movie, where Loki beamed down to talk to the Frost Giants, and you could just see, like, the 3D effect for the background with Loki standing there looking so small. This was kind of almost the same way. In certain parts of it, it looked good. Um, in certain parts that it didn't. And I haven't really gotten to any kind of spoiler, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, okay, uh, go ahead and, you know, turn away, stop the, the this video until you've seen it, you know, or if you don't care about any kind of spoilers or anything like that, um, I'll count to five and then we'll get, then we'll move forward. Okay, so now that that's done, uh, now this is, it's going to be kind of spoiler-ish, in my opinion. So, let's, uh, whoop, sorry about that wrong button. <laughs> okay, so in the movie, and let me turn on my cursor highlighter, which will hopefully help. Uh, it was nice in this movie to see Pan at this age. Um, I want to say she's kind of in grade school. And what I think, because I have heard rumors that Dragon Ball GT didn't really do that well. Now, I could be wrong. And, it, you know, I mean, it's just stuff I've heard. I have seen some episodes from it. I didn't think it was bad. Um, I didn't think it ranked up there with, like, Dragon Ball. So... You know, like I said, it's kind of a, eh, you know, it was okay. Um, so, I think, and it's just, again, my opinion, I think they're trying to kind of remove Dragon Ball GT from it because this is definitely before GT, and we knew, and, and we all know that Goku was not a Super Saiyan God uh, in GT. I think he was able to do uh, Super Saiyan 4 at that. That's where he had, like, hair on his arms and, you know, and a tail and all that stuff. So, but 
it's definitely nice to see Pan at this age, right here, you know, showing a, a, at least some kind of continuity timeline with at least um, Dragon Ball Super. So, because in, in that, in the, um, in the movie of uh, Battle of the Gods, that's how they, they, at least in the movie part of it, they found out that Gohan's uh, wife, can't think of her name off the top of my head, so sorry if I forgot, um, was pregnant, and that's how he was able to become a Super Saiyan God to fight Lord Beerus. Uh, Krillin is typical self in most of these that have always been after, you know, the, the big baddie fight that where, you know, okay, life returns to normal and everything. And yeah, he's always outclassed and everything, which I mean, I get it. You know, he's not a Saiyan. He's not, you know, a Namekian and anything like that. And, you know, obviously we have the former I'm not saying that he's former, but in this movie, he 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 was he wasn't the hero of it, um, which I'll get into that here in a moment. And then obviously Piccolo, and here's one of the I'd like to call them Thing One and Thing Two. Uh, <laughs> it's actually Gamma Two and Gamma One. This is Gamma Two, obviously. And and in the movie, uh, Piccolo fights Gamma Two. And, you know, I mean, Piccolo's powerful and everything. And he could pretty much hold his own with, with Gamma 2. Um, he's not strong enough to defeat Gamma 2. But, you know, it was, it was nice. That, it's nice that this movie actually gave Piccolo and Gohan their turn to shine. Because Goku and Vegeta were off on Beerus's world training as always and it was you know it was it, like i said it was nice to see gohan get a chance to actually be a hero without his dad coming to the rescue okay even though most people say that you know piccolo was his dad I, it, piccolo to me is like his 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 godfather because when goku died in Dragon Ball Z, yeah, Go or uh, Piccolo raised him, trained him, and everything. So, but it was nice to see these two, um, basically, you know, like I said, go at it, try to do it. So what happened was that. And like I said, with the animation, it was nice to. The 2D th transferring back and forth between 2D and 3D, it, it was great. Because uh, if you've seen the trailer for Dragon Ball Super Superhero, you saw where Piccolo was in disguise of one of the Red Ribbon Army people. And it showed 3D and him looking up at the sky and all that stuff. And kind of like how my reference to Thor, the first Thor movie... It worked for that, but there were some times where it was just, did you really need to have have 3D? Okay, so there was that. Um, like I said, it's it's it to me. It's not the things that I will be bringing up that to me are negatives. It's not enough to really destroy the movie or anything like that, and I don't want anybody to take it that way. It's just to me, I I just think some of these things should have been thought out a little more, maybe tested a little bit before they did this to see, okay, this works, this doesn't, <coughs> excuse me, or they could have just left it out, because, you know, I mean, I've seen some other people's reviews, and they're like, yeah, I, you know, in certain aspects, in certain scenes, yes, it fit, in certain ones, I'm just like, I... <laughs> so, but what happened was, is that, you know, they're covering, like, the Red Ribbon Army, and they're talking about it, and it's like, okay, you have, and sorry, I don't know. I know, I know the, the, the leader of the Red Ribbon Army is Magenta. And there was this dude with this, like, almost like a 50s, like almost Elvis haircut type thing that was scouting uh, Dr. Giroux's 
grandson or something. I, I can't remember exactly how, but they're related. And so again, if I, I got it wrong, I'm sorry. You know, goldfish, and plus it's been, you know, a little bit since I saw it. Um, so, and they covered it because they were keeping an eye on him and everything. And it's kind of like they almost rehashed it when they went to the prison after Dr. Hedo, because that, that was his name in there. So at least I got that name. <laughs> um, and they went and tried to pick him up from the prison that he was in. So he went and did, and it's almost like they kind of had to rehash the whole thing again, where his henchman like showed him all the information about it, told him his backstory. And I'm just like, why are we rehashing this? Okay. The henchman informing Magenta, the head of the Red Ribbon Army. And that's fine. You you covered everything. You covered how they were able to, to rebuild, reborn, who they're after to try to build them, androids to defeat Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, Gohan, and anybody else from the Z Fighter squad. Okay. But they had to drag it out. And it's like those minutes could have been you the the rehash part could have been used for maybe a little bit longer fight scenes. You know what I mean? Maybe a little more uh like maybe Piccolo convincing Gohan to to train and, and maybe train him a little bit, you know, before everything went sideways. So so they get Dr. Hedo and they convince him that they're the good guys. You know, so so Dr. Hedo builds Gamma 1, Gamma 2, and he builds them with like hero, I don't know if he said chips or personalities, but however he built them, okay, they think they're they're the superheroes and Vegeta and them are the bad guys. I guess maybe they were trying to be a little comic bookish or classic um like Adam West Batman where when they hit somebody you see on the screen pow and stuff. Well, Gamma 2 has a, some kind of generator that whenever he was hitting Piccolo and that, you know, kaboom and all that stuff would flash on the screen, which I'm like, oh, "Okay, you gave him egos." Yeah, okay. I can, I, I can see that because it goes along with the whole superhero thing. And like I said, kind of, again, brought me back to Batman from the TV series with Adam West. So, okay, you know, that's kind of a, yeah, okay, I can let that, that slide. I can see it. So then, then later we find out that they're making Cell Max. And... I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, Cell Max. Now I'll see if I can try to pull up a picture of it. This is about as best I'm going to get. So, okay. So here's Cell Max. And I know I'm probably jumping ahead a little bit, but. They did talk about it, and they showed it, and he wasn't this colorful at first. And I'm like, okay, so is he going to eventually be like a more buff, polished version of Perfect Cell from DBZ? Well, I'm going to hold off on that because I'm going to continue with everything else. So... Piccolo is trying to convince Gohan to, you know, he should be training, not sitting and doing, you know, report work for whatever company he was, he was working for. Because again, I, I don't remember because a lot of the little minor things that I don't remember, you know, that I find insignificant, it doesn't stick into my brain too much. So what happened was when Piccolo infiltrated the Red Ribbon Army as that person, you know, as one of the, the, the henchmen type, 
he kind of they said about kidnapping his his daughter pan and he was shocked he was gonna stop him but then he was like well maybe this will be the push for gohan and when they captured her and everything took her back to the thing then they went to deliver the message to gohan gohan went completely nuts and i mean he powered up and just standing there he like like and you probably remember from the DBZ, like sometimes when they power up, they kind of make craters. Okay, well, that's exactly what he did. Because he was pissed off. So when he went to where the Red Ribbon Army was and he started fighting, he fought Gamma 1. And basically, Gamma 1 was able to, to, to match him power for power. I mean, his... His power, first powered up form, uh, his first Saiyan form. Well, actually, in in the fight, he just fought as him, himself without powering up to Super Saiyan. And Gamma 1 was able to, to keep up. Powered up to, and I don't know if that was his uh, Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2, or just lighting up as Super Saiyan. Because he... he his transformations are not the same as like Goku's and Vegeta's where you can tell it's one, two, three, four, you know, stuff like that. So when he, when he powered up into, into a super Saiyan form, Gamma one was still able to, to match him toe to toe and actually still be ahead of Gohan in the fight. Until I think Gohan went to the one form from uh, when it was the Majin Buu saga, and he powered up to that there where there was no glow. Then, if my memory serves me correctly, it was a little bit different fight then, but I, I still don't think it was really enough. So so they were fighting, and, and what really set Gohan off to get to that that form was that Piccolo was up there with Pan, and he told her to try to, you know, you know, scream so that it would enrage her dad. And that's what it did to get him to that form. The weird thing is when, in the, and this was earlier, when Piccolo and one of the henchmen went to capture Pan, Pan knew it was Piccolo right off the bat. Okay. The same two henchmen delivering the uh, message to Gohan Gohan couldn't sense that it was Piccolo or figure out it was Piccolo and not he, 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 just I, I'm just like this dude has not been training enough or he lost a lot of his skills <coughs> and that to me is one gripe it's like that shouldn't have happened he came from a really awesome fighter Goku but Again, I, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why he that happened. So, so there was that, and then, like I said, they were fighting and everything. And uh, oh, and sorry if I'm I'm jumping back and forth because things just pop into my head. Um, Piccolo tried to get his um. Uh, hidden powers released like how they did in dbz with like gohan and krillin and and that there by um uh, i want to say it was Gu guru in that but i could be getting the name completely wrong because it's been many years since i saw it but whenever the elder from from namek you know put his hand on gohan's head and released his hidden power and stuff like that he wanted the same thing but dende couldn't do it because he's, I think he said he wasn't old enough or something like that, but he was able to redo the Eternal Dragon to do it. So he redid it. They had three wishes. So he used that, and instead of wishing, using the other two to say, mm, I don't know, wish back Vegeta and Goku to bring them back to the planet to help out, uh, Bulma used them for her ass and her eyebrows. 
I mean, I get it. And I truly do. I truly get it. Almost van vanity. But. So, so he unlocked his hidden potential. He says to him, you know, I've unlocked that and then some. So then, back to the fight. Uh, I think it was... Gamma 2 was fighting Piccolo. Kind of hit him in a way, and he started falling down this deep pit. And then all of a sudden, this tree lit up symbol. <coughs> and Piccolo, Piccolo's full power came out and everything. There was just... And... I totally get it. Um, you know, you want a color change, kind of like how... You know, Super Saiyan is yellow. Uh, Super Super Saiyans one through three are yellow. Just their well, the hair I think stays the same in one and two, but the third one for Goku, it gets longer and everything. And then four is is the one where it's all black. He's got like red and yellow eyes, almost like Sith Lord eyes from Star Wars. Has a tail, stuff like that. So the, so they want to distinguish this new form of Piccolo's from his other, and I get it. It was orange, and okay, I have no problems if they want to make him look a little orange instead of green. Okay, because in his power up prior to that, like all of the draw, like the lines in the green area of his skin, they just disappear when he powered up. And, okay, again, you want to show his transformation. Totally get it. And like I said, I really have no problems with the color. I have a problem with the name, Orange Piccolo. What? Oh. I mean, you want to call it Super Namekian? Or, you know... Something, some, something. I mean, I think, in my opinion, I think Super Namekian is a lot better than Orange Piccolo. So, for some ungodly reason, they did that. And so they, they fight Gamma 1, Gamma 2. And apparently, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 sense that there's no evil with the fighters that they're fighting, like Gohan, Piccolo, Krillin. So they realize this, and that's when Magenta s starts to see at some point that they're losing because of Gohan's power, Piccolo's power, stuff like that. And he goes down, he activates Cell Max, which then is the picture I had color-wise, because... Like, there was these tanks of different color, and they start floating into the stuff where he was, because I don't, I don't know if I could find a picture of what he looked like prior to that stuff happening. Let's see if I can try to find maybe a couple of images. And yeah, it just it just shows Cell from the DBZ series. You would think with as many, but whatever. <coughs> so, anyways, Cell Max in the thing prior to Magenta activating him and the pumping all the different colors into the tank, he was kind of like a grayish color. You could see a little bit of color, but not like in in the one photo. So. So basically, I'll pull that picture back up uh, here in a moment. So basically, he activates Cell Max. Uh, Dr. Hedo, he gets, I think uh, Magenta shoots him. Well, he injected his skin with some kind of stuff. It said in earlier that bullets won't hurt him. And he ends up killing Magenta by his genetically enhanced bee or wasp or whatever it sticks him in the neck and his skin and the toxin that it put in there he just started turning green and 
and uh, Magenta decided to do some kind of robotics where he pulled his shirt off and like his skin all the way up to about here was like a, a metal suit type thing, almost like Iron Man type arm, armor. It wasn't colored the same or anything, but it, it looked like it. So, so there was that. And so he kills him. He can't stop Cell Max. Cell Max comes up. He is this gigantic thing. Because right here is uh, Thing 2, Gamma 2. And you can see Cell is, or Cell Max is huge. Okay? So he is like super strong and everything. And they said that his only weak spot is right here. So what he does is everybody distracts him. He flies up. He comes crashing down. And he, he sacrifices himself. And he loses this arm right here. Which is all well and good. I totally get it. The only thing is, is that it wasn't enough because... Because basically, it just it just wasn't enough to really like slow him down. And before that, uh, oh, can't think. Of, I know it was Trunks and uh, Goku's other son, Goten. When they're when they're fused together, they actually came straight down on his head, and it cracked his head, but it didn't wasn't enough to destroy him or anything. So that's when. Uh, at least I think in the order of the movie might might be wrong, but that's you know then um, Gamma Two does that and Cell loses his arm, but he doesn't regenerate. So I'm thinking he looks like the Cell of old, but he doesn't regenerate. That's kind of weird. And then. Gohan, like Piccolo realizes that he can, he can uh, still grow large like he did whenever he fought Goku, I want to say, yeah, as a, as a kid when he was King Piccolo, and he, he just didn't, like, pull it off, and I'm trying to find a because, uh, I mean, you know, he was orange, but it didn't increase his power or anything. So he was fighting Piccolo. I mean, he was fighting Cell Max. And I'm just trying to find a picture, so forgive me for not looking into the camera. And he was fighting, and he saw that he was losing. Because I'm trying to find pictures. I know I can find it. Okay, I, I found a decent one here, so... You know, which I'm sure maybe you guys have seen a lot. It's just, this is just me. I've been wanting to do it, but like I said, I, I just had some other things. So, so this here is basically his beast form. Uh, he has like red eyes, gray hair. Uh, it's styled a little longer, a little, little bigger than it was when he was a kid, when he did Super Saiyan 2 to fight Cell. And, I mean, he just turned into this miraculous beast, which was crazy. And Piccolo was still alive, but when he thought that Piccolo was was dead, it kind of did the same thing. He had that same look when he was a kid, the same red beam shooting past his head whenever uh, that one android uh, cell stepped on his head and, and, and killed it uh, or destroyed it. And it was that same snap moment, same thing here. And then, like I said, he just exploded with power and everything. And what happened there was when Cell saw his, you know, power light up and everything, he came over and with his one hand left, he went like this to punch Gohan and it just stopped right there. It didn't go any further, and Gohan didn't move. And then he goes, is that all you got? So then he just basically kicked his ass, and Piccolo was trying, and Piccolo was back, and he, 
used his how he can like stretch his arms long and wrapped around cell to hold him because he was doing the frieza thing with the you know he'd hold his finger up and that big ball that he could destroy the planet and piccolo was trying to hold him so that gokhan could do and you would think he would do a kamehameha like his father would no he actually charges up a special beam cannon that he learned or well, that piccolo did that apparently he's seen and he fired it it and sell through the ball it not only destroyed the ball but it still hit him in the head where his weakness was and it caused him to just flat out explode so so basically uh like i said my only gripes with the fact that the battle scenes my three biggest gripes about it i mean the movie was good and i did enjoy it there was just three things that if they would have just changed it would have been a little better the first thing was don't repeat the stuff when the henchman's already covered everything just say look we need you to help us with this because we want to destroy them are you in we'll supply you with money that would have been it and he all he would have had to do is say yes okay move move on that way like i said the fight scenes with gamma one gamma two couldn't have been you know could have been a little bit better a little bit longer you know what i mean i just think that each fight scene the one with piccolo with gamma 2 and gamma 1 with gohan and even uh with piccolo at the final end i think they could have been a little better because they could have been a little longer and not as rushed in my opinion now again it's my opinion and they could have done a better job with Cell. Okay? They could have made him a more powerful, perfect Cell. And not this... Because, to me, Cell Max was nothing but a mindless brute. I mean, that to me is what it was. And I'm like, and I could be wrong again. I mean, believe me, feel free. Comment in the comments below. Um, I have a feeling, and it's just, I don't think that there's any, and even, even in Dragon Ball Super Broly, Yes, when he gets pissed off, he fights blindly, but there's still some kind of tactics to it. To me, in 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 super superhero, to me, I I just feel that that he was just a mindless brute, and there wasn't too much thought going on up there. He didn't talk. He didn't, you know, it was just, you know, grunting, growling, screaming. I, I mean, I know there was that one, and I can't think of it, where he was all red and gray. Because he started out as this thing, and, and that there, and I, I can't remember. It was, I think it was in Dragon Ball, and it was in the... In the afterlife, I can see it. Can't remember. So, like I said, I'll know it to see it. But the point being is that even him, he didn't talk. But and it's same thing with Boo. Boo really didn't talk till after he started absorbing people, and then he was like talking. Um, try searching Dragon Ball Z villains. And I'm just trying to see if I can find the one that I'm thinking. Ah, found it. Love it when I can find stuff. So anyways, so this guy right here, okay? And, you know, 
yeah, he, he didn't start out this way, but he ended up this way. And yes, he didn't talk, but at least he fought methodically. And even in Dragon Ball Super Broly, that too was the same thing. He learned, yes, he got ticked off, but he learned how to fight as he was fighting. So there was at least a methodical... And yes, there was a point where it seemed like towards the end he was just wild you know crazy out of control but it at least it built to that cell max in my opinion just head on you know was just a mindless brute to begin with i i didn't it, and like i said again it's my opinion if if, if you think otherwise explain it to me down in the comments because i would i would love to read it because maybe maybe i didn't see it but somebody else did but those those were the things that if they could have polished up a little better you know what i mean and that probably would have made the the movie better in my opinion if i if i was to give it a score i would say i would give it a b for visuals because like i said the the 2D, 3D, it worked in some ways, in some ways it didn't, in my opinion. Because um, I, I, I just think the 3D, when part of the, the, the base exploded where Cell Max was, and it was just this giant ball, and I think it was when he was coming out, you know, and everything exploded. Eh, really didn't need it there. Because that was like a distance thing. Um, so, that, you know, there's an example, in my opinion, again, that it just didn't work there. But like I said, when he was just, you know, when Piccolo was just looking around and the way they spun it, it's kind of like the, the camera in like uh, Zelda or Super Mario Brothers, where you could just look around and, and all that stuff. That I thought was done really well to give it that 3D spin as he's looking with oh my god, I cannot believe this is here of the Red Ribbon Army base. So I give it a B for that. Um, as far as the action and everything goes, I, I, I give it a, a B minus. Um, the storyline, it's, it's not a bad storyline, just like I said, there were some stories uh, there were some lines in it or there's some parts in it that could have been either removed or polished up and i've pointed some of those out where like i said the whole you know hey let's cover it and then cover it again um the whole you know like trying to make gohan this kind of eh, i don't want to fight where I mean, I I, I kind of get it, but he should have he should have at least tried, you know, like sort of kept up with the training. Maybe not as heavy as as his dad, but you know, again. Um. So yeah, I I, I give the story a B. Uh the that's 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 pretty much it. Cause cause like I said, the fights could have been a little bit better. You know what I mean. I don't know. I mean, you know, if you've seen the movie and, like I said, you find what I'm putting down totally wrong, that's fine. Please, feel free. Comment. I would love to read it. Because, um, again, you know, I, I really like Broly. I thought the way they did everything with Broly was fine. And I, I, I've i seen online some people have said that, you know, it, it, it kind of... It kind of sucked that they showed Goku and Vegeta, but they weren't in the movie. And, you know, I could I could see where they wanted to do that. They wanted Gohan to come into his own. And this, I think, is a stepping point. Now, whether or not they start going with him as opposed to Goku, I don't know. They could have a new form for Goku 
in the future where it's God only knows what color after that. It'll be interesting to see how Go Gohan's beast form, as they're calling it, which... I mean, is it the same as Goku's god form? Or a Super Saiyan blue form, which is like one level above that? Oh, who knows? I, I, I don't know how they're doing the power levels on this. Um, they could be the same. Gohan could be more powerful, which then will just push his dad to get even stronger than him. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to say what they do. Because, like I said, I don't know if they're going to retire the Vegeta Goku portion and now rely on Piccolo and Gohan. Who knows? But that's just my thoughts on this. Um, I want to tell everybody have a good... Uh, good holiday coming up this weekend. Uh, I'm not going to be here. Uh, I'll actually be coming back on Saturday. Uh, me and my wife are... By the time you see this, the concert will have already happened. We are, we are going to see uh, Ramstein out in Philly. And then we're going to hit a couple of coaster parks. And we will be back. Uh, heading back anyway. So, like I said, enjoy the the holiday weekend, and I will catch up with you guys soon. Have a good day, guys, and take care.